Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, April the 16th, 2018, and what an exciting closing today. I'm going to hand this right over to Miss Vegas. Oh my gosh, can I just say? I mean, everyone thought like, the day was, you know, up and down. We had some trades here and there, but you know what? The day was coming to a lull, and it was almost like espresso coffee, and out of nowhere... Phenomenal news started hearing the scanner screaming QCOM, QCOM. I like, we've been watching this and waiting for some future news with an app with Apple and finally got the news, you know, and the news was that they, um, I think they said they were going to drop all the uh, legal, legal um, battles here and decide to come to a settlement. Uh, so that was excellent news. And, you know, didn't even really read all the details at the time because I thought, you know what, if I spend too much time reading, um, I, you know, I read what I needed to read, but I didn't read all the little, you know, the whole document. Um, and um, right away said to the team, especially more on the options team, really more from the stock team, but really just talked about, okay, let's get into an option call right away. And right away when I looked at the QCOM, I was looking for something quick like something that we could look to sell today or even sell off tomorrow and needed, didn't really want to hold into anything that expired and looked for something reasonably priced because I really wanted people with smaller accounts to participate. So I was able to locate an option call with a strike of $70. Now, let me tell you, that was super aggressive because the stock at the time was about 64. So we'd have to do a lot of volume, a lot of work to really get it going to $70. And I kind of said, you know what? I'm comfortable with 70. I ha I'm pretty confident it's gonna go to 70 based on all of a sudden the splurge of volume that was coming through the door. And the tape was just so heavy. And um, you can see on the chart that Jim will show you how much the volume was actually spiking, right? Basically like at 2.59 PM is when I basically alerted the call. And my goodness, I am holding some of these calls for tomorrow. And uh, high of day on this was 74.20, and we're looking pretty good after hours. So the call was alerted at 24 cents. I know some people from our group uh, did tell us that they got in at 17. I'm like, how did they get 17? I don't know. But you know what? Good for them. Um, I didn't get into myself till 31. So it cost me $31 a contract. But it's so nice to feel that a $31 contract turned into $200 per contract like $200 profit. I mean, the contract went as high as 232. And you know what? After hours, we are going to make a new high of day. And this is why I wanted to keep holding contracts into tomorrow. A little bit risky because you should certainly be taking profits um, when you tr make such a huge gain, like over 900% uh, from the initial alert. But you know what? Congratulations to so many people. I mean, I know, I know for sure we're not the only ones that traded the stock or the options. So, um, but I just, again, another example of a small account, you know, $24, $31 investment. And like I said, one person got it for 17, turned it into $200 plus profits. That is just amazing. So uh, congratulations to everyone. And I'm going to turn it over right to Jim now to talk about QCOM because even as we're talking, it's on a breakout right now, live as we speak. All right. Well, this is the QCOM chart chart right here and this is how I have it kind of set up we were looking at it right when this popped up Miss Vegas called it out and people in the room got in it and played the game well, I'm gonna pull up a yearly chart on it take off right after hours we're popping up we're making new highs right as we speak we're at 74.35 and there's the ticker 74 and now we're at 74.40 so she's moving on up Miss Vegas called this to $70 I called it first at 68.80 we hit that target Right here at, um, oh, right around the 69 level. Let me show you. Pull up the yearly chart now. Have a gander at it. See if we can find some new resistances. We did have a yearly high up here at 76.50. And I see a resistance right at 75.39. So I've kind of had this already mapped out. And I'm going to draw me one more trend line right in here. Right about, oh, I can probably estimate right about that 74.65. So let's pull up. take these two things off right here and see if we can find us some new targets on this thing and we're pulled back 
but this was excellent news for this stock to run. Our next resistance is going to be right here, right around the 72.31 area. We hit the 74, excuse me. Let me go to the daily. The next resistance we hit was 74.65. That's where we are right now. And the one after that is going to be right around 75.39. So we're getting up there to the top to that yearly high already. Pull that one year up again. See where that 75.39. So if we break that 75.39, <laughs> that's blasted through the year high. The next resistance is going to be right up here, right around the um, $76 area. And then the 76.50. Let's just put it at 50. Bam. And we'll pull up a three-year chart and see if we can get any more out of this. So that's it. That's your three-year high right there at 76.50. So congratulations to everybody that played this. I'm going to see if I can find a little pullback on it. We'll look at the 20-day. I'm going to probably the daily will give me a better idea or the yearly. I'm thinking if it pulls back at all, it'll be back down here to the 69-something. But it's hard to tell. We're just going to have to see what happens in the morning. Our next resistance of the year three-year high is going to be at 76.50. And this is QCOM. And good job, Miss Vegas, for alerting the room about this trade. Well, you know what? I also uh, uh, got to say it was great uh, information and um, from the news sources. And also, you know what? I just want to say that, you know, the, the agreement was to drop all litigation. And um, that also includes uh, the Apple contract manufacturers. And they've reached a global patent license agreement and a chipset supply agreement, which is what's which is really good, I think, on both companies. And so I think that's great. Uh, there will be a settlement payment from Apple to Qualcomm. And the companies have reached a six year license agreement, which is actually effective April 1st, 2019, which is actually from two weeks ago, including the two year option to extend and also a multi year chipset supply agreement. So this is fabulous news. Um, so let's definitely see. I mean, this will be really great if this can break the 7650. I mean, who knows? I mean, like I said, I think the stock's on fire. And that's why I said, you know, what? I'm going to keep some options into that overnight. And uh, we should see what tomorrow brings. So far, we're in good shape. And uh, this will be an interesting story to follow tomorrow. So congratulations to everyone. Okay, so the next one uh, that I want to talk about is uh, ARQL. And, you know, we've talked about ARQL before. And, um, you know, one of the things I liked about ARQL and, um, you know, obviously they've had, they were at the healthcare conference on April 9 and, um, you know, they did, they did also announce too, um, they were at the, uh, conference at the Westin Grand Hotel in New York city, which I did mention before. And they're into, you know, biopharm, they're into research and development. They actually, I mentioned cancers and rare diseases. So we did really like the fact that they're going to commercialize uh, what they call small molecule drugs in a areas of high unmet needs to improve lives. Um, so one of the things I liked was the chart was just so bullish. I mean, I noticed a pocket pivot on the chart and I really like pocket pivots. We talked in chat what a pocket pivot is. And I think we'll talk more about that probably in a future separate video that people can understand some of the terminologies that we talk about in the videos so that you are uh, more understanding of things and patterns to look for on charts. Uh, but the pocket pivot certainly showed that this chart was ready for another move. And you know what? We called the pullback on the stock. We even called this on a pullback at 624 and said, this looks great for this to make a new high of day. And you know what? ARQL had a very nice day today. And uh, still looking for the stock to have a continuation even tomorrow. So watch this one. If you're not in the trade, you may like it. Um, you may want to keep an eye on it. And uh, I'm looking for this to go for $7. And Jim, can you tell us about the chart and what you see? Because uh, you're the chartist. Yeah, I see we're almost breaking up to a yearly high on my resistance level. And that's going to be right here, right around the 679 area, 680, with a yearly high of 721. We also have a little resistance right here. Let me fine tune this up real fast. Right here, right about 692. Bring it back to realization on the yearly chart. We did have a, a huge pullback on this back during the sell off back in December to a low of 223. 
and we're up more almost 300 percent on this trade from that December 21st level right back there when we had that big crash back on 1221 then everything started rebounding into the new year so we did have a huge gap fill right here where she gapped on up so it must have had some good news back on that date and then we hit it almost to yearly high we broke the double top which was right here right around the, the 667 area I dare to say 666 give it bad luck but we're gonna bring her on up to the 20 day now and look at the 20 day I also want to look at the moving averages I'll pull that yearly back up and take a real fast look at the moving averages we definitely pulled past all the four moving averages, the 100, the 50, the 200, and the 20-day. And she's riding up above that 20-day right now. So we're going to pull up the 20-day. Looks to me like it's had a beautiful, clean breakout starting the other day, starting uh, yesterday. She bounced on up here to that 533 level. And hit the resistance of 674, which is very beautiful. We got two more resistances we got to get to at 680 and 692. If it decides to pull back, your first support's going to be right here at 650, and maybe your your low support is going to be right here around 625. You see that high we had right here? That's where I'm basing that off of. And if if it really feels like it's in wants to dip down more it'll pull back to this 20 day so let's pull up one day this is how I how I'd look at it as a day trade I'm seeing that 620 as a solid low support 620 with the first support right here right around that 651 area then the two resistances whether that, that 680 and let me pull that 20 day up one more time you can stop this at any time that you want to and draw these numbers out but 690 680 692 for that that yearly high and this is ARQL keep her on watch and then I'm gonna plug right into plug <laughs> no pun intended there nope so um, you know plug had some news stock hasn't really reacted to this, but um, they did have news that they partnered with Lipari, Lipari Foods and um, you know Lipari Foods new customer plug and what they're going to be doing is this partnership they're having will allow this company to green their facilities and also reduce the greenhouse gases. Um, previously, they had to actually load up all their, I guess, uh, pallet jackets on 12 53-foot trailers, ship them to another warehouse, and charge them every day. So they no longer will have to do this, and they won't even have to in incur the cost. So imagine how this is going to be amazing for this client, Le Perry Foods. And you know what? Um, this will be a very cost effective for the company. And um, they're definitely going to also uh, create more jobs. And so they're going to have, um, you know, create jobs in Warren and in Michigan specifically. So if you're out there in those areas and you're looking for a job or, you know, someone that's looking for work, uh, they should check out this company, Le Perry, L-I-P-A-R-I. Um, so it's definitely going to help uh, power the factories and help them facilitate um, where they need to go with sustainable energy ecosystem out in Michigan. So this is really, really exciting. I think this is going to um, do, be a good partnership between the two. And I hope to see some action with this plug uh, stock. But, you know, again, it just hasn't reacted um, and you know what? It's just news that they got a new client. So maybe it's not going to react the way we want it to. But you know what? If they get more clients like this, then we should probably see some, you know, good news down the road, maybe on Plug Power's earnings calls. So, you know, this is one stock to probably just keep an eye on. And Jim, let's hear about the chart. Yes. Here's the yearly daily. Plug did have a, like back I said before many times when I pulled that crystal ball out, this thing was at 99 cents. So plugs plugged on, run on up to 286 high about a week and a half ago, and she pulled back. And then when she got that news today, she went ahead and started bouncing back up. And we're sitting here at 259 right now. So let me pull up the 20 day. We did cross all the moving averages are in their perspective order. I do have a trend line running up, up here, this little red line here. I had a trend line running up, and that trend line's going to probably go right about I'd say right about 269, 270 is going to be that resistance. So let me pull up the 20-day chart real fast. 
get an idea how this thing's going to look. We do have resistance we got to break, and that's here at the 264 level. Right here at 264, 265. And if she can get back up into this trend up here at the top of these other resistance levels, and that's right around 268, then that's going to go ahead and break to 270 and then break up to that 286 area. And I'm going to pull up this one year chart one more time. So that 286 is what we got to break for the yearly high. So this looks pretty good to me right now. I'm going to pull up a three year just to kind of get another gander, maybe some new resistance levels. And we do have a few. We have a 321 high on a three year, and that's about two years ago, with another resistance right here, right around the 304. And then another one right here at the 297 and 288. So I'm going to pull back the one day or the five day get an idea where I think it can pull back if it wants to it'll pull back to this 246 low support I hate to see it go any lower than that if it is it's gonna be a strong buy and that's really not much of a spread from 246 to where it is right now and we gotta break that resistance level of 273 to bring it up to that yearly high of 285 and this is gonna be plugged so stay tuned and we've had this on watch before we've called it out down there when it was at 99 cents and now we're up there, you know, pretty good 250% right now. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be one of my favorite industries, favorite sectors, and that's going to be CGC. Okay, so Canopy Growth. I mean, who would not uh, keep their eyes on Canopy Growth? And you know what? Uh, Canopy Growth had news. And uh, the news was that they are expanding their footprint in Europe and they acquired a Spanish licensed cannabis producer called Cafina. Now Cafina, um, just so you guys know, the CEO there of the company, he's still going to manage Cafina and Cafina was founded back in 2014. They're located in Alicante in Spain and um, they already have everything lined up. I mean, they have an established greenhouse. They got a research related medical production they got an R and D team. They have a sales force in there from the sale of the hemp seeds. I mean, this is great. They even got a license from the Spanish agency for medicine and health products. So this is amazing uh, partnership. And so they actually have taken over and uh, Canopy Growth now owns this company. And uh, they are one of three companies in Spain that's actually authorized to cultivate, distribute, and export cannabis um, for medical, medicinal and research purposes. And they actually do it today in a 1,600 um, square foot greenhouse. It doesn't sound that big, but 1,600 maybe is, a, is an okay size uh, for something out in Spain. Um, so that's actually great news. And uh, we should be able to probably hear more results. So this is great news. Uh, for Canopy Growth. So congratulations to Canopy Growth. And the other thing that I did hear about Canopy Growth too is that um, there was another news too, is that they finally finished the completion of an investment um, in what they call by Canopy Rivers in High Beauty, which is a the creator of industry-leading cannabis beauty high brands. So Canopy Rivers has subscribed for uh, 2.5 million shares in high beauty so this is interesting another another one to watch so over to you jim yeah i was listening to cnbc last night and they were talking about um uh talking about beauty cream using cannabis in beauty cream so that might be something that's really going to be a hot item to start looking at too in the cannabis sector so here we go with cgc i'm gonna look at i mean we've been calling this out pretty good we got a triple top here on a five day right around 42.63 and she did kind of pull back here after hours with a day high today of 43.17 so I'm going to pull up your chart show you how beautiful this trade is it pulled back here at one time right down here to 27 I was screaming my lungs out after we had that crash back in December to get to buying this thing this is probably one of my second favorite tickers maybe third but it's moved up to second right now with ACB on top of it. So I'd use ACB as a sympathy play to this stock right here, and it was up also today. We do have a resistance level up here right around the $50, $51 area with some highs up here that with a yearly high of 
Now I play this off my moving averages sometimes and I've got two years been watching this stock from the blue lines to the yellow lines and I'm gonna have to probably clear this chart up after today to make it more visual but right now we got a low support right here right around the $40 area 39.66 for your low support your second one's gonna be right around the 42.62 area with a pivot point in this channel right around the 41.73 and that's right about where we are right now she did pull back from today's high and that resistance that we need to start looking for will be right around this $44 area. So I'm bullish on CGC and I'm very bullish on ACB. I think ACB is going to be the first profitable uh, medical marijuana stock that's going to be out there today. So let's keep a good eye on this. Pull back support again, low support around 40 with the first support right around this area in here between 4059 and at 4090 right around 41 somewhere with a pivot point in this channel right here right around the 4168 with the resistance level we got a break at the 4266 on up to this $44 area feel free to stop this at any time and and save these charts write down some of these resistance lines that I put together I am the master of, or one of the masters not the master but one of the masters of the extended trend line pattern and the next one we're going to talk about, Miss Vegas, is going to be G J M I A, and she's yeah. going to speak about it right now. Okay, so this company here, I mean, I was watching this yesterday, this company, because this is, you know, an, an IPO that came out, and on on this actual stock, I mean, J M I A is the ticker, and it's called Jumia Technologies. Okay, J M. IA. Do you see that there? Yep. Okay. So Jumia Technologies, um, I'm hearing so many things about this company. And one of the things I'm hearing is that this is the Amazon of Africa. Okay. The company is valued at over $2.4 billion on its second day on the New York Stock Exchange. And one of the things that I want to mention about this company Jumia Technologies. It's an e-com startup that listed on the New York Stock Exchange. So it has become the first African startup to list on a major global exchange. And uh, you know when it first got started trading, uh, believe it or not, this started trading at $14.50 not long ago. Like we're talking, like when was the IPO date, Jim? Maybe you could look it up while, um, I, while I talk about the stock. But, you know, um, PayPal, um, uh, there, I mean, there's just so many things. I, don't, I won't talk about PayPal after, but um, there's two co-founders for this company. And his, one guy's named Sasha and the other gentleman's name's Jeremy. They're two co-founders and they're also co-chief executives. So they're basically doing two roles, the two of them, but both the same roles. And, um, you know, they said that they're going to focus to work hard to help consumers and sellers and partners and stakeholders benefit from this new technological revolution. And this is known, people are calling this the Africa Amazon. And you know, they operate in 14 African countries and they actually boast about 81,000 active sellers that transact millions of consumers online. And in 2016, their parent company, called Africa Internet Group became the first African startup when it hit a $1 billion valuation. And this was thanks to a funding from Goldman Sachs, AXA Insurance, and many others. And in March, they linked uh, a strategic partnership with MasterCard to develop its e-com operations. So this company is doing so many things. And I saw this yesterday, you know, I was looking at the stock because I, you know, didn't hear about it when it first came out, <clears throat> which is unfortunate, but I did look at it yesterday and I was like, oh, it's 25. And I'm like, oh my God, it had a $10 run. Like it went from 25 to 35. Well, look where it is today. I mean, yesterday it went to 35 and today it's like right now, $47 and 72 cents. I mean, this stock's going to $50. So I think longer term, 
this could be a mini, mini Amazon. So this is what everyone's saying. I think from everything I'm reading, that could be true. So for those of you that are not familiar with the company, uh, you know, definitely do your own due diligence. Read, read all about it. Um, check it out. Uh, the ticker JMIA. And yeah. you know what? It's barely been on the market for like less than a week. Yep. Um, you know, I think this just I started trading on Monday. Like the 12th. What, I think this is back the, on, so the, that was when? The 12th back Last on Friday, week. Thursday. Okay. So there you go. And, um, you know, this is just insane. Uh, and I don't know if anyone would be this, this kind of a stock. Um, you know, we'll have to see how it goes. But definitely with the company performing uh, over time, um, you know, we'll have to see. And, you know, the largest shareholder, um, you know, MTN Group, uh, eventually could sell its stock in the company, which could result in raising more than the anticipated figures. And early in the year, MTN Group expected to raise about $600 million from the sale of its shares in Jumia through the IPO. So we'll see what happens because I'm sure eventually they'll cash out on Jumia and I'm sure it's paying off. So uh, keep an eye on this one. If, even if you're not in it, keep a watch, especially if you love Netflix. You may want to watch this one because this could be the next one. So yep. Jim, over to you on that because we missed this one for sure. Well, we, we spotted it out yesterday, but uh, e-commerce operations in 14 different countries, 1.2 billion consumers, and 17 million uh, served all across Africa. Over 700 million visits to our marketplace in 2018, and one transaction every two seconds with this company right now. So let's pull up the chart where it broke out of it. It had a low down here at 1826, and here yesterday she hit, broke out of that the gate right around 2741. Then today she broke out of the gate right around here at 3323, and after hours into close we hit a high of 4773. So I'm looking at it to pull back. I got three different support levels. I got this $43 level. Well, we could put one right here too. This looks awful good right here. This 45. So we got four different support levels. We got this low support at 37.78. That's about a $10 drop. Then we've got the next one right here at 41.15. And we got the next one at 43, then 45.50. And then if we go ahead and break on up, that'll be great. But it would be nice if it would just pull back a little bit to this maybe the second support right around $43 area and then bounce up from there. I like to see it consolidate like it did here. You know, we had that high there at 37 and she pulled back to 31. Six dollar drop and then pre-market, after market, pre-market, and then she bounced up the next day, which was today, and ran all the way up from that opening gate at 33.60 all the way up to 47.73. Um, so that's a pretty big bounce right there. And we had $11 up here on this up 34 percent almost 35 percent right now as it as of close so let's see if it don't go any lower i don't want to see it go any lower than that 37 at all i think if it does that it might fail on down and go down to this other support but we do have a resist a support level at 4125 43 and 4552 definitely keep this one on your watch list this is a new ipo and thank you miss vegas for bringing this to life and yeah, well, thank you. I mean, I'm we were noticing it yesterday because I was it also on the scanner, and I'm like, oh gosh, this one took a bit of a hit, and it was it had pulled back significantly. And then I'm like, I'm gonna have to wait for a reversal, and then it was reversing, reversing, reversing. But you know, I just never really like decided to look up what the ticker was about. So I'm, um, you know, like they say, better late than never. So you know, I still looked up the ticker, and now we kind of know that it's the Netflix of Amazon. So um or the whatever the you know what i mean the, the netflix and and um amazons so anyway here but um you know what keep it on watch jumia technologies and uh i think that um you know one to watch for sure i mean hey let's not be surprised this could really shock us uh the future of this particular company and uh, didn't know all the history behind it with the goldman investing and the deal with mastercard like so many things going on so this is just an incredible company. I'm going to have to research a lot more, but um, about that stock now. So really pleased to see that one. 
So looking much better than Lyft is looking. So uh, good one. They got over 29 million products, hotels, restaurants, and other services listed on this platform. Well, there you go. See, so this looks, this sounds really cool. So I'm going to check it out definitely tonight. Yeah, so I hope that everyone had a great trading day. You know what? We talked about so many tickers. We try to try to wrap it up quickly. So we hope everyone had a great day. Again, I welcome you all, especially if you have a smaller account. It really helps to be here and listening on voice. And, you know, options is a really uh, Again, we just keep showing time and time again something so small like a QCOM idea went from, you know, $31 or $17 and some for 200 per share, probably a lot more tomorrow, and how you can grow a small account. So sometimes it's just being in the trade at the right time. And uh, you know what, it, you know, days like today, I was like, oh my God, I'm so bored. But sometimes it's like, you're bored. It's like, okay, I'm glad I didn't leave for the day because if I did, I would have missed this opportunity. So good thing we didn't. And we always have to look for opportunities to trade and uh, keep working and working hard to help people. And that's what makes us, um, love what we do because we're just love and passionate about everything so feel free to come by anytime you want we're here you're there so come by and visit love to hear from you and uh hey jim anything else to add yeah you're welcome if anybody's new to watching this video we do have offer a free trial two-week free trial and you can sign up here on our website we also have a link to our twitter account and you just got to push that little button and press follow and you'll be following us on Twitter too. So Oh yeah, if you follow on Twitter, it would be it would help. I mean, even if you're not in our chat, you can follow on Twitter because if you have a Twitter account, I usually will post ideas on Twitter. So you can also get alerts on I uh, from Twitter and maybe they will appeal to you and maybe you'll have an opportunity to trade some. So uh, obviously do your own due diligence. Nothing is a recommendation to do anything. We're not licensed professionals, but you know what? We're just sharing ideas. So at least if you're on Twitter, you could get an alert if you're obviously not in our chat. So welcome and have a great night. All right. Just, and also please subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring that bell for future updates. This is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, April the 16th, 2019. And we love stocks. Thank you.